Hi, this is Bonnie Barker with BonnieBabeCrochet.com and I am super excited to bring you the Yule Tree Throw Crochet Along. For this project, you are going to need some green yarn or actually whatever color you'd like to make, but I'm going to be using green and I'm going to be using the Red Heart Super Saver. Let me show you the stats on this yarn. It's approximately 364 yards per scan. You're going to need 10 of these. Now if you don't like using Red Heart Super Saver, feel free to use whatever you'd like. Just make sure it's a worsted weight yarn and that you have approximately 35 to 3600 yards available. Make sure you get enough of the proper dye lots so that you're not, you know, stuck trying to find the matching color which you know is really hard okay what else do we need we need two crochet hooks we need size j or 10 which is also 6.00 millimeters crochet hook and we need a size i which is us i or 9 and that's a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook okay most of what we're going to be doing is going to be with this trusty j hook but the inside part, let me just go ahead and, and give you a preview here. The inside part where the Christmas tree is worked, that panel alone is going to be used uh, crocheted with the eye hook. Now we're crocheting this back and forth across, so we're going to be switching hooks in the middle. So that's going to be, a, you know, be a good, uh, it's going to be a little tricky. Um, I find myself sometimes forgetting to change, but I will try to remind you on the video as we go across. Okay, what else are you going to need? make sure you have one of these which is a yarn needle uh, very helpful in hiding all those loose strands because you're going to have several because we're going to have 10 different scans of yarn that's going to be at least I don't know 10 to 20 uh, strands to be hidden and you're going to need a pair of scissors one more thing if you haven't done this already please be sure that you print out a copy of the pattern even if you don't read the patterns really well you know it's my hope that as we go through this that you'll be able to um, read them better but for nothing else just so that you can check off where you are as we go along in this pattern okay let's go ahead and get started okay now to begin we're going to start with the slip knot and just to answer the questions that I know are going to be arising out there, can I use, some of you may want to know, can I use the, um, the single crochet foundation chain? I mean, you can do whatever you'd like, but I think for this project, just a regular old chain works the best, especially since we're going to be working ribbing in these stitches. So let's go ahead and crochet 154 stitches. And for those of you who are new to my videos, I kind of like to... Um, go in increments of five as I crochet this chain along um, just because it makes it easier to to stop and to ask people answer people's questions when they inevitably interrupt me when I'm counting you know how that goes but anyway go ahead and get your 154 chains um, make sure that the chain is not too tight um, obviously you don't want it too loose either, but it, it should not be real, real, real tight as if it is, it's going to affect, you know, working in these stitches. If you're new to crocheting and um, sort of a beginner, um, make sure that your chain is not very tight. If you're having a hard time getting your hook into the stitches, then you probably should go up to a larger size hook just for the chain and then come back to the regular size hook for the stitching. Okay, now we're going to start in the third chain from hook. So that's one two, three, and we're going to double crochet in this chain and in each chain across. Notice I'm just working in one of the, what I like to call the V's, the V here. Um, I'm just working in one side of it because I find that's just easy for me um, and it's faster. Now some of you who like to work in the back bump, that's fine. You can do that too because we're not going to be working in this chain anymore. The only time we're going to work in this chain is this row right here. There's no additional border needed for this project, which is kind of cool. Um, so once you crochet your last row of this afghan, you are absolutely done. You don't have to do any perimeter rounds or sewing or none of that. So go ahead and work those double crochets all the way across. And when you get done, you should have 152 plus the turning chain. Now if you're reading along with the pattern, it's going to say you should have 154 stitches or double crochets. That's because they're counting the turning chain in that count. Okay, so go ahead and finish that. Now we're going to begin working our post stitches. We're going to chain two, one, two, and we are not going to work in the first stitch. Okay, the end post we always will skip when we work these 
um, post stitches and I'm going to show you why. Because when we work these stitches, we don't work through the top loops like you normally would. If you're new to post stitches, what we do is we actually bring the hook around the post or the body of the stitch like this. Not, not like a tie up here, not up high, but around kind of like a belt. Okay, so we, we begin this. This is going to be a front post double crochet. We wrap the stitch, go in the front door and out the side door, and then we bring up a loop and then you just complete the double crochet the way you normally would. That's an incredibly fast tutorial on this. If you need more uh, slower instruction on this, I do have some videos that you can check out. If you look up um, Air and Celtic Stitches and Bonnie Bay Crochet in the search bar above, you can get right to those stitches. Now after we do the front post, we're going to do a back post. We're going to come in through the back, back side, around the front, and go to the back again, to the back door. Pull up a, a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that's a back post double crochet. Once you do these a few times, you'll realize these are much easier than, you know, than they look on paper or sound when you say the whole four uh, worded name, front post double crochet, that just, you know, sounds kind of intimidating. So to do this, we just do front post double crochet, And then we work a back post double crochet coming in the back side. And we're just going to alternate that back and forth all the way across the row. I will show you how to end this once we get to that part. So go ahead and work this all the way across. Okay, once you get to the end of the row, we're ending this row with a back post double crochet. And then for the turning chain, we're going to work a half double crochet. And just as a review, for a half double crochet, you wrap the hook like you do for a double crochet, pull up a loop, and I would just go into the entire hole there, don't, don't pull off a strand or anything. Yarn over and through all three loops on the hook. Okay, so we're going to chain two, and we're going to turn. And for the next uh, one, two, three, four, five rows, rows um, three through seven, we are going to be working them the same way. We're going to start by not working in this post stitch. We're going to start on the next one. We're going to work a front post double crochet. Okay, I did chain two here. I don't remember if I said that or not, but chain two, front post double crochet, and then we work a back post double crochet, and we alternate this all the way across. Now do make sure that as you work these, that the front post are worked over the front post and the back post are worked over the back post. So go ahead and do this for five more rows. Okay, after working rows two through seven of the ribbing, you should have the base ribbing that looks like this. And just in case you may have trouble counting these rows, it's a lot easier to feel them than to see them. So you can just count them like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, you can really feel each of the rows there with the good old fingers. Okay, now we're ready to begin row number eight. And in this row, we're going to begin forming the cabling patterns on the sides. But before we do that, we are going to do a few stitches of the ribbing, and I'll show you how to do that right now. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, and starting in the next stitch, remember we don't work in the end stitch, starting in the next stitch, we're going to front post treble crochet around the next stitch. Okay. Remember, these are trebles now. And then we're going to front, I'm sorry, back post treble around the next stitch. Just to repeat myself, this, these are trebles we're working in this situation. Now, in rows to follow, we are going to alternate. Sometimes we'll be using front post double, sometimes front post treble. So you're going to want to pay attention to which we are working and when. Okay, so now that we've just completed the front post treble and then the back post treble, um, this is shown in the pattern that we are going to do that a total of five times, so or over 10 stitches. So we've already done two. Uh, we're not going to count this chain three 
in this um, repeat count. When I said 10 stitches, okay, it's going to be five repeats of this. So that was one repeat. This is the second repeat, front post, and then now the back post treble. And then the third repeat, front post treble, and back post treble. And then a fourth repeat. And then a fifth repeat. Okay, so let's double check to make sure that we do have 10 of these post stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is five repeats of the information, which is the ribbing part with um, front, post, um, front post troubles. Um, so what's going to happen here is all along the afghan, you are going to start and end each row with these um, post stitches. Again, sometimes there'll be trebles, sometimes they will be doubles. Okay, so now we're going to the next section of the pattern where it says two over two back cross and then two over two front cross. Um, these are terms that were added in um, with the editing process, but let me break that down and explain what we're doing here. Now, if you want to look at the pattern, it will explain in the introductory information of the written pattern what this means, but I'm just going to go ahead and jump and tell you what it means. We are actually forming the first row using um, preparing for the both the wheat stitch that's along the side and the honeycomb stitch. It just so happens that row one of both of those is the same. And this is the way this has worked. We're going to um, wrap our hook twice, getting ready for a treble. We're going to skip the next two stitches. We're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Now working behind these stitches, which can be a little tricky, uh, but once you do it a few times or a few hundred times, maybe in this case, um, it, it's no longer as, as difficult as it may seem at first. We're going to work behind these stitches and we're going to front post treble in the two skip stitches. And the best way, you come in through this hole and then I like to put my thumb up through here so that I can grab this stitch because we're working a front post treble crochet there. And then we're going to work one in the next stitch here. It's really helpful if you can feel it with your tall man and thumbkin, fingers, thumb, and um, what I like to do is, is use those fingers to find this stitch. And if you stick your thumb in there, you can clearly see it and pull it up and just work that treble crochet. Okay, try not to think about it too much. I know that can be uh, difficult if you think about it too much. Just go ahead and try that. And so this is what it looks like when you finish. You have these two that we worked first, and then afterwards we worked behind these to work these two trebles. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches, and we're going to front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Now working in front of these two stitches, that's kind of the opposite of what we did before. We're not going behind, we're just going to clearly work in front. We are going to treble crochet in those two stitches that we skipped here. Okay, I'm going to stop a minute. So you can kind of see kind of a large V forming here. And that's what you're going to be doing for the next, I believe it's seven times. Okay, we're going to do this seven times. We've just completed the first time. So we're going to do this six more times across. And after you complete this section, I will do a visual check with you, but it's good to always do a visual check to make sure that this is, is set up properly. This is probably going to be the most, one of the more difficult rows of the entire pattern. Um, and it's the important one because you are setting the foundation to what we're going to do from here on out. Um, once you finish this correctly, you will have a visual for pretty much what we're going to do from here out. So I think I'm repeating myself. So let's go ahead and do this one more time. We're going to skip the next two. Treble crochet, front post, treble crochet in the next two stitches. Now we're going to work behind these two stitches. I bring it around and I'm going to work around this stitch. And if you 
put your thumb up through there so that you can carefully crochet that front post and then do the next one which is right here again I can feel it better than I can see it now we're going to skip the next two stitches this is the easy part front post treble in the next two stitches working in front of these two stitches we're going to front post treble and the two stitches that we skipped here okay so now you can see two large V's so I'm going to do this until I have seven okay I've just completed the seven um, repeats and let me just count with you and show you what you need to have and, and, and do take the time to verify that these are going the right direction too so you have a V going down then up that's one down and up that's two down and up that's three down and then up that's four down and up that's five down and up that's six down and up that's seven I'm not trying to be so elementary um, to, you know to insult you or anything like that but just to emphasize that it's really really important that you verify your work at this point um, especially as we're again laying the foundation for what we're going to continue to do now we've come to the section where we are going to be crocheting the trees we're not going to start them this row but we will can, we will start them in a few rows um, down the road here um, and the first thing that you need to do when you start working these rows is you need to change your hook size from the size J and change to the smaller size I okay and we are going to be working double crochets for the next 21 stitches Okay, so let me show you what I'm going to do. For these double crochets, we're going to work right in the top loops, okay, just like this. And I'm going to encourage you to do one more thing. I didn't mention stitch markers because I honestly didn't think about this when I um, did the promo video for this, but I'm going to use a stitch marker. This is a totally optional thing. And the stitch marker there is to tell me to change my hook size. Um, I didn't use these in the past and a lot of times I would just barrel on through this section not changing my hook size and then realizing later when this side is a little puffier than it needed to be because I didn't use the correct size hook I'd have to go back and redo it so let's just go ahead and try to use those stitch markers I'm actually going to start and end this section with the stitch marker just so that it's there to remind me every single time I go through this section so we are going to double crochet just working in through the top loops in each of uh, well I guess we're going to do 21 double crochets so go ahead and double crochet in 21 stitches after completing the 21 stitches those are double crochets I'm going to put another stitch marker right there and why well that's remind me to change back to the larger size hook Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that aside. And now if you have another method of reminding yourself to do that, you know, do whatever you need to do. And you don't need to go out and buy any fancy stitch markers. You can just even use, you know, a, a piece of contrasting color thread to remind you. But, but do put something there to remind you because I promise you, you will forget. Um, it's just a real common occurrence. Okay, so let's go on to the next um, section of this row and that's just doing what we did for the first section of the row we're going to skip the next two stitches we're going to front post treble crochet in the next two stitches and working behind working behind these two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two skipped stitches And then we're going to skip two more stitches here and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches working in front of these two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped okay again forming go ahead and pull some more yarn here okay go ahead and forming 
these V's. So go ahead and work until you have seven of these large uh, V's um, form just like we did just like we did on the other side. So go ahead and do that until you have seven of these. Okay, after finishing the V sections or the front post uh, troubles, let's verify that we have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I was also verifying that they were going in the right direction, down, then up. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do, we're going to go back to working front post and back post treble crochets. And we're going to start with a back post treble crochet. We want to keep that ribbing going in the same direction that it's been going. So back post, and then we do a front post treble crochet. And we're going to do that over, let's go ahead and make that a treble. We're going to do that over the last nine stitches. I'll go ahead and do them with you right here. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way so the camera doesn't focus on that. Now you will remember that we had 10 to start where we have 9 on this side and this is going to be okay because we're going to be ending this Okay, so, so let's just verify. We have back post treble here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to work a double crochet right in that turning chain. So that kind of gives the, the visually, you know, a, a similar look. All right, so now we are ready to start row number nine. Let me say one more thing about row number eight. Um, once I show you how to form each of the first two Christmas trees, um, this is going to be the return point where you come to review or if you need more stitch support after learning to do the first two trees with me, you can come back to this video starting with row number eight. It will be labeled for you clearly to see and you begin your repeat of the additional trees from this point on. Okay, I just wanted to make a point to say that. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at row number nine. We're going to start with a chain two. Okay, notice last time we started with chain three, we're going to be working um, front post, back post, double crochet, so we're only going to need to chain two for the turning chain. Okay, so now we're going to front post, double crochet around the next stitch, and then back post, double crochet around the following stitch, and we're going to repeat that. We're going to do that a total of four times, so we're going to do that for eight stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight. And then we're going to do one more front post double crochet. So we should have a total of nine of those. Okay, you're going to like this next section. This is going to be easy. Across the next section where we worked those front post and back post treble crochets, this is actually the foundation for the honeycomb and a couple of the wheat stitches. We're simply going to work back post double crochets all the way across. So just back post in those until you get to the stitch marker. Okay, now as you're going across there, where these stitches were crossed on the previous row, it is a multiple of four. So do make sure that for every crossing of those um, stitches there, that you do have four back post double crochets. Okay, that's very important that we not change our stitch count. The stitch count will remain constant throughout this project. Okay, so go ahead and work those back post double crochets until you get to the first stitch marker. Let me show you what it looks like on the front side. Okay, that's the side that faces away. All right, go ahead and do that to the first stitch marker. After working those 
back post double crochets we come to our stitch marker and you know what that means I know I'm going to really bug you on this for a while but it's for a purpose that means to change the hook size to the smaller or the the eye or nine size hook go ahead and take that stitch marker out and go ahead and double crochet in the 21 stitches all the way across go ahead and put that stitch marker back in after you do that first stitch Again, just as a reminder, now I know many of you out there are going to think, oh, I'll remember to do that. Well, I, I used to think that too, uh, but I've, I've just barreled on through this section so many times. So go ahead now, like I said, 21 double crochets, and we are working in through the top loops on this middle section. Okay, after working those 21 stitches across these double crochets, worked through the top loops. I've gone ahead and moved my stitch marker to the last double crochet just so that I will be reminded to change hook size. I've already gone ahead and I've changed from the smaller hook to the larger hook size. Now we're going to be working across this section which is the foundation for the honeycomb stitch uh, or the you know two two by two you know working in front and back with those trebles. Um, we're going to go ahead and work back post double crochets during that section. Now there are seven, um, I guess, sets of the crosses, so that's about 50, that is actually exactly 56 stitches um, during this section. Um, the best thing to do is when you have those four stitches, two and then two in front and two in back, make sure that you're doing four back post double crochets. A, across or you know each of those uh, places where those stitches cross so I just want to make sure you don't leave out any stitches okay so go ahead and work that all the way until you get to the last 10 stitches which is the ribbing and then I'll show you that once you complete those 56 back post double crochets that's going to bring you to the ribbing and you'll know clearly that you are at the place to begin the front post and back post double crochet ribbing when you come to the section right here okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to work um, back post and front post double crochets make sure we're working the double crochets we're not doing the trebles right here so front post back post front post back post and we should be doing this over 10 stitches. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this out with you. Okay, and we end with a back post, double crochet. And then after we do that, we come to that turning chain and we just stick the hook in that whole turning chain and we work a half double crochet. So that's another thing I can review with you real quick. When you end with front post double crochets, you're going to work a half double in the turning chain. Now the rows where we work the front post treble crochets, you're going to end with a double crochet. And, and the decision I made with that has a lot to do with the height of these stitches. So that we try to keep everything as even as possible. That's why we're having to alternate the front post doubles and, and, and back post doubles with rows that have front post trebles and back post trebles. Okay, let's go on to the next row. Now to start row 10, I've turned and we are going to chain three times, one, two, three, and we're back to working front post treble crochets. So we're going to work front post treble crochet, and then we're gonna work a back post treble crochet. We're gonna do this over the first 10 stitches for the ribbing part, and let's, let's take a step back, and you should see the ribbing part actually ends here. You can feel it with your fingers more than you can see it. And I'll go ahead and flip that for you. And actually let's take a look at what we've just worked. The other side, the beginning of these uh, honeycomb and what's going to be the honeycomb and weed stitches should look like this after working that last row nine. Okay so anyway back back here on row ten so we're going to be working again these front post treble crochet and back post treble crochet. So go ahead and work those for the first 10 stitches. After those 10 stitches, which make up the ribbing with the front post and back post 
treble stitches. We are going to work in this section here, these eight stitches, we are going to work what I like to call the wheat stitch. And I'll show you what that looks like as we make the stitch. Now we're going to do exactly what we did two rows earlier. We're going to skip two stitches. We're going to work front post treble crochets in the next two stitches. Now working behind these two stitches, we are going to work front post trebles in these two stitches. And you can pop your thumb up through there so that you can make that a little bit easier to complete that stitch. And also, again, using your tall man and thumbkin to kind of guide your way into that next stitch. As you can see, it becomes quite easy. Once you've done it a few, a few million times, I guess I could say as I have, or even just a few times so that you understand what to do. Skip the next two stitches, front pro post treble in the next two stitches. Now working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two skip stitches. Okay, I'm going to pause and I'm going to show you the effect of what's happening. So you can see where these two stitches are opening out each time. They're opening out like that, almost like um, a stalk of wheat. If you've ever, you know, looked at a picture or walked through a wheat field and see how how these open up. And that's what you're going to do from here on out on this side of uh, well, this part of the afghan. Okay, so it's going to always start with one uh, eight stitch wheat stitch. Okay. Now what we're going to be doing on the next set of five V's or like foundation for what I'm calling the honeycomb stitch, we're going to do something a little bit different. It's actually quite similar to this but in reverse. So we're going to start out by skipping the next two stitches. We're going to front post double crochet, I'm sorry, front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. And then now working in front of these two stitches, that's where this is a little different, we're going to front post treble in the two skip stitches. I'll complete the other side and show you why I'm doing it this way. Now we're going to skip the next two and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Now this is where we work behind these two stitches. We're going to front, front post treble in the two skipped stitches here. Okay, so let's pause and take a look at what we've just done. I wanted to show you the difference. Now as you're looking at this, if you just look at the last eight stitches that I did, you can see this kind of a boxy, almost honeycomb-like structure. And it's kind of fun when you're using this, especially the stiffer um, Red Heart Super Saver yarn. I think it really does give more definition to the stitch than, than the soft yarn used to. So in some ways I'm preferring this yarn choice over the original. So you see the honeycomb. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making five of these honeycombs across and then we're going to do another wheat stitch. Let me show you just the wheat stitch by itself where it's again opening up like a, a wheat stalk. Okay, so we have these eight stitches as a wheat stitch and then we're going to make the honeycomb stitches over five what well, we're going to make really five honeycombs so let's go ahead and make another one skip two stitches and front post treble crochet now I know that this is a lot and it might be kind of maybe a little frightening to some of you but but please don't don't be afraid everything has a learning curve um, once you do this for several rows, I promise you, it's going to become so visual, you won't even have to consult the, um, the pattern. Although I do advise that you keep track of the, the number of rows that you're on. Okay, so I've made these two treble crochets. Now I'm going to work in front of those two stitches and front post treble in the two skipped stitches. Skip two more stitches. 
and I'm going to front post treble in those next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches, I'm going to front post treble and the two skipped stitches. Let's take another pause and I'll show you how this looks with two honeycombs. So hopefully you can see that. Now once we make these other row, uh, the back post row coming across for row 11, it's going to give it even more uh, distinction, give it a little more of a, of a shape. Okay, so you can see the wheat stitch and the honeycombs. So go ahead and do what I just showed you for the last eight stitches. Um, do that three more times until you have one, two, three, four, five of these, and then we'll make the last uh, wheat stitch together. Okay, now that I've finished the five honeycombs, and I'll let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. There should be one more base left here, right here, and this is going to be worked for the last last group, which is going to be a wheat stitch, which is the opposite of what we've just been doing with the honeycomb. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this one. We skip two stitches front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Now working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in those two stitches that were skipped. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. And then working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in those two skip stitches. Now I know this is redundant, but I'm going to go ahead and work again. I'll, I'll show you again um, to just stop for a moment and do a visual confirmation. Do you have a wheat stitch here? Do you have five of these, um, one, two, three, four, five of these honeycomb stitches? And then you should have that a wheat stitch. Okay, so you have one wheat stitch, five honeycombs, and then one wheat stitch. Now we've come to the place where our stitch marker is, which reminds us to change our hook size to the smaller crochet hook. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the directions are to single crochet, I'm sorry, double crochet, forgive me, double crochet in the next 21 stitches. So I'm going to crochet that first double crochet. I'm going to put that stitch marker back in because this really is serving me well to not to have to remember that on my own with the hook size. It's almost like tying a string on your finger for something, you know, but uh, when you run across it, 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 it just helps trigger, trigger my 50 plus year old brain. So I'm going to go ahead and do these 21 stitches, which will take me to the next stitch marker, and then I'll show you what to do after that. So that brings us to our stitch marker on that 21st double crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the stitch marker, if I can, there we go, and place it back. And that's to tell us to change the hook size, so go back up to that size. J. After those 21 double crochets, we're going to start by working the wheat stitch. Now, if you are ever wondering what comes next, you can always look at what you just did on this other row because everything is going to be totally symmetrical, okay, which is kind of fun. So we're going to skip the next two stitches. We're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Now working behind those treble crochets, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. And again, use those fingers here on the non-dominant hand to help you find those stitches and to verify them. Okay, so go ahead and skip the next two stitches. Front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two skipped stitches. 
Okay, let's take a pause and look at what we've just done. Okay, we do have that wheat stitch. Now the next five stitches, remember we are going to be making the honeycomb stitch, which is just the opposite of what we just did. Skip two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Oops, let's make sure we get all the loops. Okay, now working in front of these two stitches, we're gonna front post treble in the two stitches that were skipped. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches, we're gonna front post treble in the two stitches that were skipped. Okay, and that forms our honeycomb. Okay, so we're gonna do this four more times over the next number of stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and work those and then I'll get back to you. So after a quick check to make sure that I have five of the honeycombs, I still have my wheat stitch and then one, two, three, four, five of the honeycombs. Uh, I know that's redundant, but trust me, you're gonna wanna stop and check every row that you do so that you don't accidentally make a mistake and have to rip out multiple rows. Now we're gonna make our wheat stitch over these, or wheat cable over these eight stitches. So we're gonna skip two, front post treble in the next two stitches. And the only difference is we're gonna work behind these two stitches. Front post treble in those two skipped stitches. And we're going to skip the next two stitches and front post treble in the next two. And working in front of these two stitches, front post treble in the two skipped stitches. Okay, now we go back to the front post and back post and we are working front post and back post treble. We're going to start with a back post treble crochet and then a front post treble crochet, back post treble, front post treble. I'm going to go ahead and finish this with you since it's just a few stitches. front post and then we end with a back post treble crochet and like I said before at the end since we're using treble crochets we're going to end here with a double crochet because that matches the height of what we've worked all the way across this row okay so let's go ahead and turn we are now ready for row number 11 and row number 11 simply says to repeat row nine. So let's take a look at row nine again. It's chain two, and we're back to front and back post double crochet. So front post double crochet, and then back post double crochet. Go ahead and do that over the first nine stitches. Okay, then this section ends with a front post double crochet. So just show you the ribbing section here. Now we are going to work across the 56 stitches that has the various cablings, you know, the, the wheat stitch and the honeycomb stitches, and we're just gonna work back post double crochet across that section. So if you wanna count 56 or you wanna count by fours with these uh, crossings, um, it's up to you. But just make sure that you have four back post double crochets everywhere where these stitches had crossed or have crossed. And you can, I guess, or you could, another way to look at it is work these back post double crochets all the way until you get to the stitch marker. So after working those 56 back post double crochets, it brings us to the section with the stitch markers. And again, that stitch marker is there to remind us to change the hooks, change to the smaller size hook. And we're gonna go ahead and simply double crochet um, one double crochet in each of the next 21 stitches. I'm going to be faithful to continue to move <clears throat> my stitch marker again. As a reminder, 
I need the promptings here so I don't forget to do that. So go ahead and double crochet in the next 21 stitches and that's working through the loops, the top loops, not post stitches, okay? So go ahead and do that. After finishing those 21 double crochets, I'm going to move the stitch marker up. This is the last of the 21 stitches and that's to remind me to change my hook again. Okay, so back up to the larger size hook. <clears throat> now we're going to work back post double crochets across the next 56 stitches. So now that brings us to the ribbing and we're just going to use front post and back post double crochets. So we're going to alternate that over the next um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stitches, and I'm going to end with a half double crochet. I'll finish these and then I'll show you that. So after those ten um, front post, alternating front post and back post double crochets, we're going to end by working a half double crochet, just working through that turning chain, just like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn and see what you should have at this point. Okay, so you the ribbing. You have your wheat stitch and then your series of honeycombs followed by the section with the stitch markers and you also have your honey, I'm sorry, your um, uh, wheat stitch here or wheat cables, wheat cables and we have the honeycombs, another wheat cable and then the ribbing on the other side. So let's go ahead and start row number 12. Okay, and this is going to be very similar. We're going to start row number 12 with a chain three. One, two, three. And we'll move our hook over here to have that ready for action soon. And we work front post treble crochets in this row. Front post treble and then a back post treble. I'm going to alternate that over the border ribbing sections. Front post treble and then a back post treble. So go ahead and do that over the next one, two, three, four, five, six stitches and then I'll show you where to go from there. So after completing those front post and back post treble crochets, we're going to work the wheat stitch or wheat cable. We're going to skip the next two stitches. And we're going to front post treble in the next two. Working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that were skipped. So go ahead and dig those out of there. Again, using your using your tall man and thumb that will help to feel where you need to be with those stitches. And now skipping the next two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. And working in front of the last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that were skipped. Okay, so that completes the wheat cable. Now we come to the honeycombs and we want to, let me just show you real quick, we're going to do this row right here. It's the same thing that we did down here where we work behind and then we work in front of those two stitches. And that's basically what we're going to do for the next five honeycomb cables. We're going to skip two stitches. We're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Now working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post, front post, treble crochet in the next two stitches. Actually this is exactly what we did over here, it's just that because we're working them in the honeycomb section, it does look different. I'm going to skip these two stitches and we're going to front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. And 
working in front of these two, we're going to front post treble in the two skipped stitches. Okay, so go ahead and repeat this across the next one, two, three, four cables. Actually, the next five because it is done the same way for the wheat uh, cable. You're doing the same thing even though it's going to look different because of the way we finish it with the rows that follow. So after completing those 56 stitches for uh, the cabling sections, we are going to change our hook again to the smaller hook. Go ahead and remove that stitch marker and I'm going to start by working those 21 double crochets and again that's working through the top loops of this section and this is where the trees are going to appear in about two rows we're two more actually this row and one more row and then we're actually going to start working on the tree section okay so go ahead and double crochet all the way across those 21 stitches after working that 20 number 21 double crochet go ahead and Let's change our hook and I'm also going to replace that stitch marker. I really do like the idea of using these as a reminder. Um, now the other side is going to be worked just like we did those other 56 stitches. We're going to be working skip two, front post treble crochet in the next two stitches, working behind these two stitches front post treble in the oops, in the two skip stitches. Make sure we hold on to the loops there. Having a hard time getting that one. There we go. And we're going to skip the next two stitches. Front post treble crochet in the next two stitches, working in front of the last two stitches, front post treble and the two skip stitches. So go ahead and work this over the remainder of the stitch of the cabling section. Okay, even though these are two different cables, this particular row, it's worked the same way with the cables forming another V. Okay, so go ahead and finish those. You're going to be working over a total of 56 stitches in this section. Okay, I've just finished doing the treble crochets and you know crossing them back and forth for this cabling. And I just encourage you, when you complete this each row, go ahead and give a quick visual check to make sure the cables are all going the directions that you want them to. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to rip out multiple rows um, because all of a sudden I look down and oh my goodness this is crossing the wrong direction so just give a quick visual check you don't have to count anything um, just just a visual check and that can save you sometimes hours of redoing your work okay so to finish this we are working the trebles remember so we're going to work front post and back post treble crochet for the ribbing starting with a back post back post treble and then a front post treble. Okay, so go ahead and alternate that until you get to the last stitch. Or at the end, since we're using treble crochets, we're going to end here with a double crochet. It's chain two, and we're back to front and back post double crochet. So front post double crochet, and then back post double crochet. Go ahead and do that over the first nine stitches. We're just going to work back post double crochet across that section. So if you want to count 56 or you want to count by fours with these uh, crossings, um, it's up to you. But just make sure that you have four back post double crochets everywhere where these stitches had crossed or have crossed. After working those 56 stitches, um, back post double crochets. It's time for us to change hooks because we've come to our stitch marker and change to that size eye hook and I'm going to go ahead and take out the stitch marker. Mm. 
sometimes these are hard to get out. Okay, so I'm going to double crochet in that first stitch and I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. And I'm going to work those 21 double crochets all the way across to the next stitch marker. After working in that last stitch with the stitch marker, go ahead and move that up. Okay, so that reminded me to change the hook. So after that, we have the back side of the cabling. We're going to work those 56 back post double crochets all the way across those 56 stitches. After those 56 back post double crochets, we work the ribbing, which starts with the front post double crochet, and then back post double crochet. We're going to alternate that over the last 10 stitches. After those ribbing stitches, we end with a half double crochet in that turning chain. And that ends row number 13. Now we're going to start row number 14 and we will actually start working on our first Christmas tree or Yule tree as a part of this project.